Hi guys, this is our mammal behavior and reproduction video. By the end of it, you should be able to compare the different mating systems and explain the adaptive advantage of each, uh, explain delayed implantation and diapause, and compare the growth and development of different mammals. So the different mating systems um, are similar to the ones that we've talked about for um, for birds. So some mammals are monogamous, where one male and one female pair bond, but that's a really small percentage, two to four percent, and actually that might that number might be a little inflated. Um, there might be a a pair bond between one male and one female, but um, research is finding that there's a lot of extra pair copulations that occur even in those situations. And monogamy usually occurs when either females are widely dispersed, so they're not as easy to find, or when um, parental care, lots of parental care, is necessary. There are some examples of um, of monogamy, though, in the mammal, in the class mammalia. Uh, the California mouse meets for life, so that's one strong example. Uh, most mammals are polygamous in within that polygyny is most common so that's remember when you have um, one male and multiple females but that's not always the case either there's um, some sometimes females will mate with multiple males like in the case of elk where female elk will mate with several males every single day of the breeding season and then there's some mammals that are considered promiscuous which means that individuals mate with any member of the opposite sex that they come across but research is now showing that that's maybe not quite exactly true, and that they would meet with any individual of the opposite sex, and showing that even in those populations that we thought were promiscuous, that there's some degree of competition that happens for mates. And an example of that is snowshoe hares. So mammals have some different strategies for attracting mates. Um, smell is one, especially in species that are nocturnal, so they can't see each other as well at night, and so um, they're using scent glands or pheromones to kind of communicate with each other and attract mates. Sounds are also um, an important way for mammals to to find mates, whether it be howl, howling, bellowing, barking, roaring, or squeaking. And then for those that are either crepuscular or diurnal, sight does come into play, and Antlers are kind of one of the easiest ways that we can see um, that mate attraction happening in mammals. Remember, antlers are usually in just males, um, the exception being caribou. And it's both for sex recognition, so telling which individuals are males, but also um, kind of the size and the quality of the antlers um, can help them compete for a mate. Several mammals exhibit what's called delayed implantation, where they'll mate soon after they give birth, but then implantation of the embryo doesn't occur until months after that. So they'll have the embryo just kind of floating around in the uterus, and it's not until it actually implants in the uterus lining that it starts to grow um, into a fetus. Bears do this, seals, weasels, badgers. Uh, that time in between fertilization and the implantation when the embryo starts actually growing is called diapause and what this does it'll is it allows the young to be born um, when the probability of survival is the highest so let's say they um, breed in the spring but then if you went through the gestation time that might have them having their baby like in the middle of winter and that's not when um, survival would be the highest so um, this way, with the delayed implantation, they have the babies once survival is the highest. Kangaroos can actually have an embryo in their uterus that's in diapause, a joey that's in the pouch and um, latched on, and also a nursing young kangaroo out of the pouch that still comes back to nurse. So in some mammals they have kind of different stages of young all at the same time. So growth and development, we'll look at 
oviparous mammals and then viviparous mammals. The duck-billed platypus, those are only found in Australia and Tasmania, they normally have um, two eggs and they'll incubate them for 10 to 14 days. They're born altricial and um, they actually, so monotremes, remember monotremes are the mammals that lay eggs, they don't have nipples and so milk just kind of comes out of the skin and it, in the um, duck-billed platypus it just pools in these um, and like puddles on the mom's stomach and the um, babies just drink it off their stomach. And they'll be in the burrow um, with their mom for four months before leaving out. Um, echidnas, there's a couple different species of echidnas. They're found in New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania. Um, they actually have a temporary breeding pouch and they'll have one egg and it immediately as it exits the cloaca goes directly into the pouch they put it directly in their pouch and then um, the milk for them pools in the pouch and the um, the babies when they hatch out of the egg in the pouch they'll drink the milk from those pools and the young echidnas remain in the pouch for about eight weeks after hatching and they look super weird when they're first born <laughs> so the growth and development um, of viviparous mammals, specifically marsupials, a little different from uh, most mammals. Marsupials are born super altricial, so really, really, really tiny, really undeveloped, um, hairless, eyes closed, um, just teeny tiny, and most of their body is comprised of their mouth parts so that they can just latch on. Um, they immediately crawl into that marsupium, which is the pouch and attached to the nipple. They don't have um, baby teeth, and they don't have any teeth at all, actually, until finished suckling. Now, for placent um, placental mammals, um, as most mammals are, they develop in just in an amniotic sac, and um, if you compare the amniotic sac of a placental mammal with like a reptile or a bird amniotic egg, you can see that all the same parts are there, it's just um, in a little bit different proportion, a little bit different layout. Um, that amniotic sac is um, the kind of the fluid that the mammal's floating around in, and it usually ruptures either bef right before or during birth, and that's in humans, what, when we say the water breaks, that's that amniotic sac rupturing. In mammals, parental care is universal. So all mammals take care of their young, but it just depends on how long. It could be just a couple weeks, it could be several years. And again, those terms precocial and altricial come into play. Precocial mammals are those that can they're born, they're walking within a couple hours, running maybe, um, getting their own food, that kind of thing. Hares, um, cetaceans, so um, marine mammals, and ungulates are precocial. A four-day pronghorn can outrun a human, that's pretty sad. Um, there's, then on the other hand, there's altricial mammals that are born hairless, their eyes are closed. Most small mammals are born altricial. Um, and they just stay in, in the nest or, you know, close to mom for a longer period of time while they develop. Sexual maturity is another place where there's a wide range um, when you span across different mammals. It could be just several weeks for some rodents. Uh, female metal voles will breed as early as three weeks, whereas um, for some larger mammals like elephants, gorillas, and humans, it's 10 to 15 years before they reach sexual maturity. So again, I want you to make sure you have some good notes on each of these points, the mating systems, delayed implantation and diapause, and growth and development of different mammals. And we will end with a little bit of trivia. So, there's three bear species in North America, black bear, grizzly bear, and polar bear. Which one do you think lives the longest? You ready? It's the polar bear. The polar bear can live up to 45 years, which is pretty long, um, compared to the black bear, 31 years, grizzly bear, 39 years. 
Okay, I'll see you in class.